All right, welcome to KM6LYW Radio. This is a show about amateur radio or ham radio with an emphasis on digital or data modes, trying to reimagine amateur radio in the information age. Hey, this is going to be a new segment. I don't really have a title for it yet. I'm, I'm thinking the segment title is going to be Hold My Beer, I Want to Try Something. And this is where we do something extraordinary with amateur radio, something that maybe has never been done. We're going to try that this time on KM6LYW Radio. <laughs> Yeah. Yep. <laughs> All right, welcome back. That's right, we're still doing the cheap bumper music. I've really got to start writing down those bumpers uh, jingles. I have no idea if that was a repeat. All right, so today we're going to do something extraordinary with ham radio. We're going to send an email. I know you're thinking, that's not extraordinary. Okay, what if I told you we we're going to send an email using APRS packet radio? Again, you say, that's, that's not that neat. Um, but what if I told you we're going to use APRS packet radio to send an email through the International Space Station uh, that's going to be rising over California here in about 15 minutes? That's pretty cool, sending email through the International Space Station. Now, I know right now you can ping packets off of it using APRS, send your position, maybe send a message to another radio. Uh, but a lot of people don't know that if you are a WinLink user, go to winlink.org and sign up for WinLink. It's basically email for amateur radio. That they have a virtual radio out there. It's called WLNK-1. And you can send it commands and messages, and it will format those into an email that you can send to anybody on the internet. So today we're going to try and do just that through the International Space Station and send that email using APRS packet radio through the space station, uh, but, get, but send those packets directly to the WinLink APRS virtual radio, which will forward them on as an email. So the space station will be rising here in a little bit. I want to make sure we get everything set up correctly. Now this will be, this isn't really two-way stuff, so the WinLink doesn't really operate the space station like we're going to do, so this is really going to be one way. Now to initially set up WinLink, you need to send a packet to uh, the station called WLNK-1, and it's going to do a challenge response, and you need to do this on terrestrial radio, that's what we have up here, 144390, at least in the Americas. And we're gonna, we already set this up uh, for, for expedience here. I, I got Xaster running here. I don't know if you guys have seen Xaster. This is an APRS uh, application for Raspberry Pi or Linux. And it is connected to my, get rid of this, a Raspberry Pi up here. And it is running the DigiPi SD card image. It is in DigiPeter mode. Uh, well, actually, it's in TNC mode. Let's go over to the DigiPi. It has a web management interface. The DigiPi SD card image is available to patrons of the channel, by the way. It just makes these data modes so much more accessible and easy. This is the web management interface. We are in TNC and APRS iGate mode. Um, so you can see that actually on the DigiPi. It says on the screen there, it says DigiPi TNC. So over the network, we have Xaster that is connected to the DigiPi. Stay with me here. I'm going to try zooming, see if this works. So Xaster rhymes with disaster. is kind of an older APRS uh, client that's for Raspberry Pi and Linux systems. Um, you might also use Yak. Uh, that's for Windows. Um, you could use APRS Droid for your Android device and basically do the same thing. So Xaster is what we're doing here. And then I am going to open uh, a send a message to, and that's going to open this box right here. And in the send message to thing, I'm going to put WLNK1 as the station's call sign. Um, you'll notice the path is wide 1-1. One -one. You can change that by clicking on change path. All right, so that's what we're doing right now. And we're still on terrestrial radio because the space station isn't overhead. So what I did at this point, let me just see if I can zoom this in. Just before this, this call, I sent a packet. I just typed the word login right here. And then the WLNK uh, virtual radio responded with login 654. Um, now, WinLink is going to give you a six character password. And so, what this is saying is it's a challenge response. It says, give me the sixth character, fifth character, and fourth character plus three other random characters in your WinLink password. So I know it's you. So it's a challenge response uh, based on your password. So I did just that here. And on the third line, um, it was XAZWWA. You really can't derive my password from that. Um, but the, I assure you that the six, fifth, and fourth letters in my password are in that six character string somewhere. And then WLNK1 responded with, hello, KM6LYW. Your login is valid for two hours. Now, you need to do this first. Otherwise, WinLink's going to ignore all of our stuff that we're going to do through the space station. And we're going to do that on terrestrial radio. So we can see that that happened there. Uh, we got the DigiPi up there rocking on 14439. That's terrestrial APRS. Uh, we can see data flowing in down here. If I can zoom this in, 
Um, you see when the packets come in, you'll see the data fly by. In fact, we'll see them being relayed through the space, space station down here at some point. Of course, it's not moving right now. All right, so what I want to do now that I'm logged into the Winlink uh, gateway or s virtual radio on via terrestrial, I'm going to change. I'm going to go over and change the radio over to the space station frequency. That's one four five decimal eight two five, and I change that right. Now. All right, we are there at 145825. Now what I want to do next is change my digipath. And instead of wide 1-1, which is what everyone uses for terrestrial APRS, I'm going to change it to ARISS. That stands for Amateur Radio International Space Station. I'll say apply here. Now we can see in our messaging box, we got a, a path of ARISS. I can put the cursor on it. I wish I could scroll the cursor without scrolling the whole screen and uh, the station's two call is WLNK1 and then we're going to put a message here so the first message we want to send is going to be SP that's a command followed by an email address followed by the email subject and that's down here so I can take that and I'm going to paste it into here so the message is going to be SP my email address which I'm not going to say out loud I don't know why there's a special character there and then email via the ISS and that'll be the first of three messages we're going to send to the space station all right, let's check where this thing is at. So I'm going to go over to isstracker.com, and we're going to see the space station uh, when it starts rising here. So I can put you guys on pause, and the space station will magically move and start rising over uh, the Republic of California. All right, the space station is rising here. I could probably make this a little bit bigger. Coming up over California. Now, we could probably start sending the first of three messages we need to send uh, to the WLNK-1 call sign. So I'm going to switch over back to Exaster here. And the first message, like we said, is SP, an email address, and then the email title. And I'm gonna say, send now. We're gonna see what happens. Watch the, uh, the radio up here, see what happens. Send now. All right, it just sent it, and I didn't see anything come back. I would have seen the green light come on on the DigiPi. That would have been a carrier detect. Um, so it's gonna send it again, as Exaster does, just trying. I have noticed on the space station that when it's rising, it's a little less sensitive, but when it's setting, um, it's better. So I think their antenna on the Columbus module is actually on the rear bumper of the space station. So you will get uh, stuff uh, usually when it's either overhead or descending. But we're gonna try it as it's rising, as we can see. Uh, right here somewhere. Um, I haven't seen an ACK, and we won't see an ACK either. What we want to do is go to, there's a the space station where it's at, go to uh, APRS.FI and look at the messages section for your call sign and see if you see that message. Let's see if it was sent. Um, I'm going to hit reload here. I haven't seen the SP command, the command we just sent, um, so it hasn't been sent yet. So I'm probably going to send it a few more times until I see it show up here, and then that'll be the first of three messages that went out. All right, let's go back to Exaster. Exaster disaster. No, that's a pretty good program. I'm going to say kick timer. That's going to make it uh, send it again. We're going to see that we just sent it. Ideally, we'd see our packet be repeated here, but like I said, while it's rising, it might not happen. It just sent it again. You know, don't hammer the space station. I mean, if this is like a one-time experiment, yeah, you probably get away with it, but don't get crazy. I can do the kick timer again, and we're gonna look. We're gonna look for the messages here. I still don't see that SP command going through the WLNK1 server. So let's uh, let's let's keep trying here. Let me. Um, uh, let me minimize this. I'll put that down there. So it's still resending. Let's send it again. Kick the timer. Restart the retry timer. And we still don't have a response just yet. We need to make sure the space station is actually repeating. <laughs> send it again. All right, let's go back and look over here. See if we got a message. There it says, uh, SP command, it was there, it made it. Um, so it went through, it came up and down through the space station. So what I'm gonna do now is do cancel pending messages because we don't wanna resend that one thing over the over and over. And then I'm gonna go back down here to, this is the body of the message, go A-R-I-S-S. -S, and then I'm going to send this here. I'm gonna actually zoom in and in. So this is what I'm gonna send. This is the body of the message, go A-R-I-S-S. -S, and then I'm gonna click on send now. <laughs> Hopefully this one goes through. All right, here it goes. <laughs> Come on. I th oh, I saw KM6LYW was could have been just repeated. Let's look over here. Um, so here it is. RS is zero. 
AS uh, did repeat it. We did get uh, the message through. Some other stations are coming through on the space station. Let's just to make sure, let's make sure it came down and got relayed to the APRS information service. I'm going to do reload. And there it is. Here's the message body. Go ARISS. So we're two thirds of the way there. Now, all we got to do is end our email message with a slash EX command. I'm going to do that here. Um, you guys can see that here. Yeah, get this right. I, the, the, the Zoom thing's out of control, guys. So I apologize. And so now I'm, gonna, I'm just going to send slash EX, okay? And that'll end the message. And if that goes through, this will turn into an email. So I can say send now. We'll see the DigiPy. Send the message. Ah, there it is. We got repeated. <laughs> that was my message coming back immediately after I sent it. But let's make absolutely sure and go to the APRS.FI. Make sure we got all three lines sent. Um, you know, I didn't see the EX. I don't see the EX here. I do see the message body. Um but I don't see the EX yet. So that might not have made it to, to the information service. Um, so I'm going to keep sending slash EX, that third line, which will terminate the body of the email. Let me minimize this. I can press kick timer here. I'm going to reset this. Transmit. And did we get a repeat here? Yes, we did get a repeat. That's the space station telling us it got our message. It says RS0 ISS with an asterisk next to it. So now let's go over to this and see if it's slash ex ever made it well you know what? it's still standing the body of the message oh, i need to cancel pending messages now let's do slash ex again let's see if this works hopefully we didn't go off the rails okay we just sent it and we just got repeated <laughs> maybe this one will have worked um here's ex is in there um slash ex made it through so this, we should be getting an email right now um to ourself this says this is the message body go ariss so I, i'm almost hesitant to even look i think we got this right um i'm gonna keep sending that slash ex um the aprs serial number will be tagged on the on the last on the back end of that um, so it shouldn't be a repeat and it shouldn't really matter um, I did get a warrant, a thing down here's email from via the ISS from from my email address. I just got this <laughs> in my inbox. Uh, let's go check it out. Uh, I was going to go to my inbox here, and it says email via the ISS. <laughs> How about this? And all of my other email. Um, I don't know if I can zoom it in or not. I'm getting the hang of this, guys. So here it is. I got a brand new email called email via the ISS. And then it says, this is the message body. Go ARISS. So we did it, guys. We sent an email. Stay with me here. Using Exaster on a Raspberry Pi, the DigiPi over here. But instead of sending APRS out to the APRS network, we actually sent it up to the space station and back down. We had three distinct messages sent through APRS to the WLNK1 <laughs> radio call sign. Um, and that uh, those three commands that we saw right here actually cre created an email with the subject line, with the body, and then a terminator here. We did all that right now. Um, just today, with one pass of the International Space Station, this does work more often than not. It's uh, I've actually done it a couple of times. We have a WinLink net uh, here in California where anyone, everyone can check in and send these one-liners, uh, basically who you are, where you're from, you know how you reach the, the WinLink uh, gateways. Um, so I do send one through the space station here. All right, guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me. This is just a ton of fun. I got to thank the patrons, guys. You guys are the ones who make this totally possible. There are a lot of you. So uh, patreon.com slash km6lyw. Uh, that'll help fund this channel, all of this stuff. Um, it gets you access to the DigiPi SD card image. Did we, did we talk about that enough? Oh, God, we talk about it all the time. Uh, there's a, the management interface, and you go out to digipi.org, and uh, if your patrons get access to this SD card, you just put it in any Raspberry Pi, hook it up to your radio, and it gives you access to every data mode there is. And it's all accessible via your tablet device, or a web browser more specifically. Um, so you don't need to know a bunch of Linux stuff to make this work. As here you can see it's hooked up to a Yaesu 2980 uh, using an additional optional sound card and a cool little monitor. So uh, patrons of the channel get access to the Digipi. Pi SD card image, Foo, Steve, NW2W, that's Mark, Ryan, Brian, thank you, Jake, Christopher, Ian, Tony, Jim, Brad, Michael, Malcolm, Buddy Brown, Kevin King, Robert, Kevin, thank you guys so much, I really appreciate it, Aaron, Scott, Dwayne, John, Rob, 
There are so many. I have to really scroll through these. I, I apologize, guys. I need a slow scroller or something. Andrew, Larry, Patrick. Thank you, Jeremy. Ewan. Ewan. John. Thank you, John. Soren Paulson. Thank you, sir. I really appreciate it. Joe. Luke Rogers. Thank you very much. Dan. Alzeth. And I'm not getting that right. Uh, Todd. Thank you, buddy. Scott. We got a lot of Scots here. Lynn. Uh, Kiki. Thank you, Kiki. Um, hey, even my uh, call sign comes up here. I guess my I'm my own patron. I'll go download the SD, uh, the Digipi SD card image. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out with me. We sent an email through the International Space Station using WinLink and uh, APRS. Hey, my name is Craig. I'm in California, and I am clear.